With its beautiful hanging baskets and rather splendid selection of small shops, Sunny Hill suggests it's a village much loved and well cared for. But down at the far end, there's a lovely old village hall. It's in need of much repair and attention though, and apart from the local amateur dramatic society, was seriously underused. But over the last few months, all that has changed. One Saturday in every month, this plain old village hall becomes a place for intrigue, mystery and laughter. And nothing sets my pulse racing like the romance of a film theatre. And here in Sunning Hill, they have their very own Cinema Paradiso. A small band of dedicated locals show four films a day, and it was the brainchild of Jane Richardson, who lives in the village. We were looking to try and find something to raise some money to, for the upkeep of the hall because, um, you know, it's been around since the beginning of well, 1902, and, um, you know, there's a lot of upkeep needed, a lot of repair work and renovation needed. I knew there was a tradition of cinema in Sunning Hill, and so it just seemed logical that we would go along the route of um, opening a cinema here, a community cinema. The seats were already here, so we had, we had the seats, they've been here for a number of years and they've been used for various sort of Amdram um, productions over the years, but putting them out is a complete nightmare. And I've always said if I win the lottery, I'm buying a fully automatic system. It's a great workout putting those seats up. We had to um, join the film bank and um, you know, pay, pay a licence fee just to join, uh, which was quite a, quite a lot of money. And then um, every film that we have, we have to pay a licence fee as well. Licences, film rights and the like were all completely new to the villagers, but they soon found a man who knew exactly what to do. Neville Diamond is involved in an ever-growing community cinema movement. So Neville, how easy was it for you to start showing films here? Oh, really easy. Um, I've been doing mobile cinema for, for six years now and uh, helping communities and projects run films in different places. I was a projectionist in cinema from when I left school to, um, you know, up to about six years ago. Um, and then obviously projections become redundant and not used because the cinema was digital. I couldn't live without being in a cinema atmosphere, so I decided that I would try to um, recreate, you know, the old-fashioned times. limited with what you can offer technically aren't you or not uh, not not really I mean the projectors now are HD so you know we, we show blu-ray um, you know it's not always about the quality of film the modern cinemas put all their efforts into the quality of the, the screen obviously and sound but there's no community feeling um, you know you can die in a cinema and no one would know you're dead until they come to clean it this isn't a completely new idea. Sunning Hill had a small cinema on the high street for many years. Stuart McNair's family owned it. My grandfather, who was the last white Raja of Sarawak, um, his brother Harry uh, decided that he would actually give a cinema to the village. And so it was started in 1920. They, they lay the foundation stone. And there's yes. an interesting thing here with um, cinema tickets prices and even in a tiny cinema like that they had three tier pricing so they had two and six one and threepence and nine pence for the tickets to go and see daddy longlegs with mary pickford my great aunt um, rani um, margaret um, she came to play the piano here and she was a fearsome looking woman and she used to wear these massive great hats and great big collared fur coats the original picture house stayed open until the 1980s so many of today's cinema goers remember it well it was run by a husband and wife. Um, I don't know why we called him Uggy, this man. And uh, she used to take the money, and then she used to come dashing out to the front and serve the ice creams. And then he used to go dashing up and then crank up the projector. And uh, so it, it really was a, a, an old-fashioned feel. It had 320 seats, so it was very cosy. And a traditional back row. And a very good back row. Although, did he ever sit in the back row? Oh, I couldn't possibly tell you. <laughs> Most cinemas today are situated in purpose-built complexes, but in the past, the movie theatre used to bring life to many high streets. 
I remember years ago looking over the roof of a cinema and people would be coming out of pubs and restaurants to go into the cinema and then looking over the roof and then other people would be leaving the cinema to go into the pubs and restaurants. Then the cinemas went and then obviously no one was in the high street. This high street has welcomed the return of a cinema with open arms. Local shops sell tickets in advance. They cost only a fiver, by the way. The Curry House gives discount to cinema goers. And the Asperger's and Autism Centre, just down the other end of the tiny high street, is benefiting hugely. Their aim is to get their young people to integrate into society more, and selling popcorn does just that. They've provided an outreach programme, uh, which has been amazing for the young people with autism, to come and have real, real life experiences to work. People like Felicity, Natalie and Ryan are able to come once a month to do some real life training. It's something that's given them outreach, whereas other people wouldn't. Both of us are on the spectrum for Asperger's syndrome. I serve the customers drinks, tea, coffee, uh, snacks, like clean up after the screenings. Meeting people is quite hard for me and understanding body language and facial expression. I've never done this type of job before, so it's increased my confidence dealing with the public. I have looked at um, working in the cinema and I've been applying for jobs. So it's just um, waiting to hear back on a few of them. Well, this will look good on your yes. CV, won't you? Yeah. I love this place, and the really good news is after just a few months, they're making a profit, and the renovation work has already started. We've just been uh, repairing the back wall to the, to the bar, which was actually about to fall down, but there's a long way to go. I mean, there's, there's a lot of money that needs to be spent. Um, you know, we've got plans to renovate the sort of entrance area and the toilets. Um, there's work needed to the brickwork, the, the um, guttering and the windows. In a way, it gets to a point where it would be cheaper to kind of start again, but that wouldn't be, it wouldn't have the same character and the same, you know, this, this hall was built at the same time as the rest of the village, um, and, you know, we want to keep it going. What could be a story about a tiny cinema saving a crumbling village hall is clearly about much more. No one here asked for handouts or help. They figured they wouldn't get them anyway. But instead, this community jumped in, rolled up its sleeves, and by taking a step back into the past, moved forward in a simple way. And if ever you want an example of the old cliched phrase, the big society, it really is happening here in Sunning Hill.